This is the oral summary of the Supreme Court's decision in the appeal of the Financial Conduct Authority and Arch Insurance UK Limited and others. The appeal is in a test case brought to clarify whether or not there is cover in principle for COVID-19 related losses under a variety of different standard business interruption insurance policy wordings. Given the importance of the appeal to many businesses around the country and to insurers, I shall announce at the outset the outcome of the appeal, which is that the appeals of the Financial Conduct Authority and the Hiscock Action Group are substantially allowed and the insurer's appeals are dismissed. The appeal concerns the proper construction of 21 sample insurance policy wording. It is estimated that in addition to the particular policies chosen for the test case, some 700 types of policies across over 60 different insurers and 370,000 policyholders could potentially be affected by the outcome of this litigation. The Financial Conduct Authority brought the proceedings for the benefit of policyholders, many of whom are small and medium enterprises. The defendants are eight insurers who are leading providers of business interruption insurance, the insurers. Lord Hamblin and Lord Leggett give the main judgment, with whom Lord Reed agrees. Lord Briggs gives a separate concurring judgment, with which Lord Hodge agrees. The Supreme Court addressed the issues arising on the appeals under the following headings. First, the disease clauses. Secondly, the prevention of access and hybrid clauses. Thirdly, causation. Fourthly, the trends clauses. Fifthly, pre-trigger losses. And sixthly, the Orient Express Hotel's decision. Each heading will be addressed in turn. The disease clauses. These are clauses which, in general, provide cover for business interruption losses resulting from the occurrence of a notifiable disease, such as COVID-19, at or within a specified distance of the business premises. The court below interpreted these clauses as covering business interruption losses resulting from COVID-19 wherever the disease occurs, provided there had been an occurrence, meaning at least one case, of the disease within the geographical radius. The majority of the Supreme Court do not accept that this is the meaning of the words used. They accept the insurer's arguments that first, each case of illness sustained by a person as a result of COVID-19 is a separate occurrence. And secondly, the clause only covers business interruption losses resulting from cases of disease which occur within the radius, and that any cases of disease which occur outside that area do not form part of the insured peril. Lord Briggs and Lord Hodge would also have upheld the court below's interpretation of the clauses, but otherwise agree with the main judgment. The prevention of access and hybrid clauses. These are clauses which, in general, provide cover for business interruption losses resulting from public authority intervention preventing access to or use of the business premises. Some clauses apply only where there are restrictions imposed by a public authority following an occurrence of a notifiable disease. The court below held that this requirement is satisfied only by a measure expressed in mandatory terms which has the force of law. The Supreme Court rejects this interpretation as too narrow and holds that an instruction given by a public authority may amount to a restriction imposed if it carries the imminent threat of legal compulsion or is in mandatory and clear terms and indicates that compliance is required without recourse to legal powers. Other clauses apply only where there is a, an inability to use the insured premises. The court below held this means complete and not merely partial inability to use the premises. The Supreme Court agrees that inability rather than hindrance of use must be established, but holds that this requirement may be satisfied where a policyholder is unable to use the premises for a discrete business activity or is unable to use a discrete part of the premises for its business activities. The Supreme Court interprets wordings requiring prevention of access to the premises in a similar manner. 
causation. The court below found that the relevant government measures were taken in response to information about all the cases of COVID-19 in the country as a whole. The Supreme Court holds, in agreement with the court below, that all the individual cases of COVID-19, which had occurred by the date of any government measure, were equally affected proximate causes of that measure and of the public response to it. In relation to the disease clauses, it is therefore sufficient for a policyholder to show that at the time of any relevant government measure, there was at least one case of COVID-19 within the geographical area covered by the clause. In reaching this conclusion, the Supreme Court rejects the insurer's arguments, first, that one event cannot in law be a cause of another, unless it can be said that the second event will not have occurred in the absence of, or but for, the first. And secondly, that cases of disease occurring inside and outside the specified radius should be viewed in aggregate, so that the overwhelmingly dominant cause of any government measure will inevitably have been cases of COVID-19 occurring outside the geographical area covered by the clause. In relation to the prevention of access and hybrid clauses, the Supreme Court holds that business interruption losses are covered only if they result from all the elements of the risk covered by the clause operating in the required causal sequence. However, the fact that such losses were also caused by other uninsured but non-excluded effects of the COVID-19 pandemic does not exclude them from cover under such clauses. The trends clauses. These are clauses which in general provide for business interruption loss to be quantified by reference to what the performance of the business would have been had the insured peril not occurred. The Supreme Court holds that these clauses should not be construed so as to take away cover provided by the insuring clauses, and that the trends and circumstances for which the clauses require adjustments to be made do not include circumstances arising out of the same underlying or originating cause as the insured peril, i.e., in the present case, the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Pre-trigger losses. The court below, subject to qualifications, permitted adjustments to be made under the trends clauses to reflect a measurable downturn in turnover of the business due to COVID-19 before the insured peril was triggered. The Supreme Court rejects this approach. In accordance with its interpretation of the trends clauses, adjustments should only be made to reflect circumstances affecting the business which are unconnected with COVID-19. Lastly, the Orient Express Hotel decision. The insurers place considerable reliance upon the first instance decision in Orient Express Hotels Limited and Assicurazioni Generali. That case concerned a claim for business interruption loss arising from hurricane damage to a hotel in New Orleans. The policy contained a trends clause with similar wording to those in the present case, and both the arbitration tribunal and the first instance judge accepted the insurer's argument that the cover did not extend to business interruption losses which would have been sustained anyway as a result of the damage to the city of New Orleans, even if the hotel itself had not been damaged. For reasons given when addressing causation and the trends clauses, the Supreme Court concludes that the Orient Express case was wrongly decided and should be overruled.